Hey guys, it's Maris. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. So today's video is a first video in a series that I'm piggybacking off of my new releases videos that I do. I thought it would be a good idea to go back and revisit the books that we talked about. For instance, this video is going to be about the January, February releases that I talked about in December. So I basically did some research on Goodreads, on Amazon, Instagram, some book blogs, and also a few like New York Times reviews and stuff like that. So basically I just went through all of that kind of stuff and I just wanted to find what were the things that people were most saying? So whatever I saw come up more than once, um, I kind of made a note of. So we're gonna revisit these books and see if they are worthy to go into your TBR. If you want to know more about these books in depth, like what the synopsis is, I'll put a link up here to the original release video and you can check those out. So the first book that we're going to revisit is The Awakening by John G. Faherty, which is a demonic possession. The story sounded really cool, uh, really interesting. Most of the pros that I saw for this story was that it was very disturbing very creepy, uh, uncomfortable, um, which, you know, you definitely want with a demonic possession book. Also that the, uh, the story was actually really, really good. The characters were good and most notably the main character, Father Bonaventura. Well worth the read said, I don't think I've been so freaked out since I read the story that inspired a head spinning Linda Blair to visit my nightmares from my teens. Some of the cons with the story was that the keeping up with the characters was kind of tedious and hard to do because there's so many characters. If you remember, there was like two priests, there was psychics and paranormal investigators, uh, a spiritualist and maybe some other characters. So that seems like it could be kind of dense and also that there's a lot going on. So there's like a lot of things happening. It's getting really, really busy. Maybe that could be a little bit exhaustive. One reader said, I became a little overwhelmed with the amount of things happening back to back, not to mention the multiple perspectives of various characters I also had to keep up with. And another reviewer talks about this nonstop action, um, that it was really over the top and it just kind of felt like too much. I also read some things that the exorcism is not the main focus of the story, which in the way that it was phrased, it sounded really interesting. Like, you know, maybe there's all these other factors going on around this exorcism. That's um, more of the, the beef of the story, I guess. I think all in all though, this still sounds like a really good read to me. And I think I'm definitely going to put this one on my TBR. It just seems like it's going to come down to maybe some reader preference things, but it sounds like it could be really cool, um, especially with the, the comment of it being over the top. Um, I think for a demonic possession, I would expect it to be a little over the top. So I think that's okay for me. The next one is The Road of Bones. This is by Christopher Golden. This came out in January. This is a road trip, supernatural thriller that takes place in Russia. Most of the things I heard about this was that it was chilling. It was eerie. There's a lot of suspense, but mostly what I read was that the relationship between the two main characters was really, really good. Like it was just really well done and believable. And you really liked the banter going back between these two characters. As one reviewer said, this works best when it focuses on the relationship of the odd couple at the heart of the story while Felix is driving passion, leading both men into an unimaginable location and situation. Some of the cons for this story was that there were some editing issues. Um, so there were grammar issues. There were, there was actually a pretty bad name mix up. So there's like some kind of uh, reveal, but the names were mixed up, which can definitely damage the experience for the reader. So that's really unfortunate. There were two things that some readers brought up, which was that they wish there had been more research into cold life survival. Um, you know, people live very, very differently in the cold. And I learned this the hard way because when I lived in upstate New York, we had a few really horrible winters and I had never experienced that in my life. And you really have to do things completely differently. Your needs totally change. So some people said they wish they had more research there to make it more 
probably, I don't know, just maybe have more depth to that. And the other thing was, was that some of the mystical elements for some people felt a little shallow. But other people really enjoy them. So I think it's going to depend on how much you know about certain type of folklores um, for this particular story. And I think this review probably says it best, which they say a chilling, if sometimes silly, supernatural thriller best read by the fireplace. I'm on the fence a little bit with this one, so I don't know if I'll pick this one up. The Devil House by John Darniel. This was released in January. Um, this one is a little annoying because it was definitely advertised as a horror book, um, but it is not. And it's definitely not a supernatural book and it's definitely not paranormal. From what I read from most of the reviews, this is kind of more like experimental fiction, you know, with maybe some shades of you know, scary stuff in there, but it, it's mainly experimental fiction. But if you like that type of thing, one reviewer said that The Devil House was terrific, that it was confident and creepy and powerful and a soulful page turner. They had no idea where it was going. But if you're a horror fan and you were hoping for a horror book, that's not what you're going to get. One reviewer said, if you start reading this book with the expectation of meeting ghosts, spirits, or other supernatural things, that can wreck your day. You're going to be disappointed but if you go into it with the idea that the word haunting has many definitions, um, that is something that as a, as a spooky, haunted horror fan, um, I kind of always like that term haunting is like so tricky. So many films, so many books where, you know, you, you read the synopsis and it's like a haunting story about, it's like, well, is it haunting or is it haunted? You know, because it sort of feels like it's trying to give you a little bit of that vibe that it's kind of maybe in that arena, but it's not. And I really hate that. I hate that so much. And in this instance, uh, the publishers really pitched this as horror. Don't really appreciate that as a horror fan. I did read often that it was kind of hard to get through, a little bit dense maybe, um, and the story could be confusing for a lot of people. And I think that's because this is more experimental fiction, so it's probably non-linear, it's probably doing a bunch of stuff, jumping around, I don't know, different perspectives, who knows? It's experimental, so that if that's not your thing, which for me, it's usually not, <laughs> to be honest, um, you might not want to read this one. One person described it as a story within a story within a story within a story, which is sometimes kind of good, it just depends, I think, on how it's written. Um, another person said that <laughs> Uh, it felt more like an essay than a story. For myself, definitely skipping this one. Not for me. Hold My Place by Cassandra Windwalker. This also came out in January. Um, and this was like gothic, uh, paranormal romance of some sort. Most of the good things I read about this was that the prose was really beautiful, atmospheric and gothic, you know. Also, it's a bit of a slow burn, but there it seemed like that was okay. And I think with gothic stories, I think they're always kind of a slow burn, you know, because you're you're building up a mood, you're building up an atmosphere, you're looking at details. You know, it's very introspective. It's and it's also studying you know, feelings and stuff like that. So that makes sense to me and that's totally cool. People uh, did talk about how the book wasn't predictable and how the ending was kind of a surprise. This reviewer had a very interesting um, thought about the prose. They said the underlying menace cuts through the extravagant prose to lightly mark you as you read, but never takes over the story completely. It reminds you of its haunting presence throughout. So on the opposite side of that, we have the prose being a little bit too heavy for people to deal with. One reviewer said that the book was so busy describing things in overwrought detail that it totally loses the plot. I think if you're a gothic fan, I, I think this is totally worth your time. Definitely and absolutely. The Book of the Most Precious Substance by Sarah Grams came out in February. Um, so this was an interesting one. I think like when I had read the synopsis and I picked it to put it in the releases, I was just like kind of intrigued by it because I was like, wow, what is this book? You know, like it sounds so unusual. Um, and this book is mainly about 
sex magic. <laughs> um, so the pros for this story were that there was a lot of decadence, like a lot of description of decadence, just decadence all over the place. And I think for some readers that can be very titillating and kind of exciting because you're indulging in it too, you know? The other part of it was that it was very sexy. There's a lot of sex scenes and it seemed like a lot of people enjoyed them. And that there was a very interesting mystery at the heart of this story. Um, and that the ending was unsettling, which that's nice to hear. A lot of the stories of the main character partaking in this decadent lifestyle or moments or events or whatever um, are really intriguing, but some people felt that they were a bit repetitive, like it was kind of the same thing constantly all the time. But the narration and the voice of Lily, the main character, it seems like it really kind of made it work. So some of the cons for this, like I said, there is some like repetition, like people felt that the decadence scenes or the acts of decadence were just really repetitive. Um, and also that there's a lot of sex. So it's gonna depend, like, do you like a steamy novel or you don't, then you might not really enjoy this one because it's gonna have a lot of that. I mean, it is about sex magic. That is the theme, that's the motif. So it's gonna be there. Some readers said that the ending was sort of a mixed bag and they didn't really know how to feel about it. And Rachel from The Shades of Orange, who we all know, she said this is more of an erotic thriller than a traditional horror novel. So that is something to keep in mind as well. So it sounds like as a horror reader, there, there, there's not gonna be a lot of horror here. This is gonna be more about exploration, about maybe one's sexuality and their desires and things like that. So it might not be really good for horror fans, but if you love a good sex scene or 20, I don't know how many are gonna be in here though, and uh, you like this element of magic, it could work for you. I'm, I'm not into the whole sex scene thing, so this won't be something that I don't, I don't think I'll be picking this one up for myself. It's just, um, yeah, uh, it's just not my thing. Dead Silence. This is gonna be an interesting one to talk about. This is uh, sci-fi horror. This came, this is by S.A. Barnes and it came out in February 8th. Now, I had already been seeing people reading this on Instagram and just kind of seen a lot of like, kind of kind of down the middle like people who really liked it and then people who were not really that impressed with it but i think the difference here is like when we come to sci-fi uh you'll probably get sci-fi readers and then you might get horror readers if it has these horror elements in it but i think it's going to depend on how much of a horror fan you are um because it seemed like for horror fans this book wasn't horror enough and for a sci-fi readers, they liked these little elements of horror. So I'm not sure. I still definitely want to read this one. I'm still going to pick it up because I still think it, it sounds really cool. Um, the other things that people talked about, which were good things about the book, um, were that there was not a lot of heavy sci-fi world building, which to me is cool. Sometimes when you're reading these abstract uh, descriptions about <laughs> buildings or cities or planets or whatever, sometimes it can be really hard to imagine what the author is seeing if it's not broken down in a way that, I don't know, it's, it's easy for us to consume, right? So um, I think that's really good <laughs> for me. It also has a flawed main character. I mean, I'm, I myself really love a flawed main character. You know, I think it gives them a lot of room to grow, to evolve, um, even to de-evolve depending on, you know, what their arc is and stuff. So I think it gives them a lot of room and also you can have them maybe do things that another character who's kind of more on a the good or the bad, you know, couldn't necessarily do a lot of gray areas. So it's, I like that a lot. One reviewer said that this was atmospheric, claustrophobic, and thrilling. This book played out the stuff of nightmares. One reviewer talks about how uh, the main character Claire is an unreliable narrator and how she has this trauma in her past, which I'm assuming is going to be affecting decisions or things that she'll be doing like in, in the story. So I definitely like that because I like finding out what the story is, you know, what, what's her history. Some of the cons for the story was that the characters were flat um, and that on, <laughs> on this like that there was no heavy sci-fi building, there wasn't enough world building. For instance, the 
the yacht that Claire and her crew go to claim to salvage is this huge, beautiful um, spaceship or space yacht or something, and they kind of refer to it as the Titanic of the the space yachts, I guess. And um, one reviewer was like, I really wish we got to see more of this. Like there wasn't a lot of descriptions, really didn't explain much about it and didn't really talk about its mysteries as much as I'd hoped, which does sound like a missed opportunity. And that also that this book is more of a thriller, not so much horror. And that, like I was saying in the beginning, um, horror fans might find this to be just like not horror enough. So if you're looking for something that is horror focused, this might not be the book for you. Um, but if you like thrillers, you like mysteries, you like sci-fi, this is perfect, or you don't like horror, but you just want a little smidge of horror in there, maybe this one is for you. I'm still gonna get this because I think it still sounds really interesting and I'm still curious about the story. Nothing has really put me off too much, so I think I'll still get this one. Lake of the Dead, this is a reissue uh, with a translation into English. It was printed in 1942, it's from Norway, and uh, it's by Andre Birka. I couldn't find a lot of people who have read this book and reviewed it. I did see that Lydia over at Typical Books reviewed it, so I'm gonna show you a little clip of hers. I've already likened this on Instagram and other places to Lovecraft by way of Nancy Drew. And Lovecraft by way of Nancy Drew may sound odd to someone or it may sound like I'm poking fun at it, but no, I love Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew is terrifying stuff when I was younger, and it does have this like, simplistic, creepy, cozy feel. Be sure to check out her full review on this book if you want to learn a little bit more. So the good thing about this is that it's, you know, it's, an, it's atmospheric, it sounds like it's well written, um, and it, it feels like it has like more of a thriller vibe to it. So if you like these mysterious, moody thrillers, this could be really good for you. Or the cons of this might be that it might be too subtle for some people, you know? Might just be a little bit just too, uh, mild. <laughs> it just depends. If, if you like watching old movies, you love watching movies from the 40s and 50s of mysteries and horror and stuff, then you'd probably really like this. Um, and you should also check out the film that was made in the 50s, I think. Beneath the Stairs by Jennifer Fawcett uh, came out in February. This story uh, sounded really cool, really promising. You know, it's like a haunted, abandoned house in the middle of the woods and some uh, two teen girls are, you know, messing around there and things go wrong. So it sounded really promising. What I mostly saw about this for the prose was that it was a really nice coming of age story, um, which I don't think it said on the cover synopsis that it was. So I think that might have been a surprise for a few people. Um, and also that it had a really good mystery. One reviewer said that the characters and storyline are woven together in a way that keeps the tension going from beginning to end. Some of the cons for this was that, it, that the reveal wasn't that exciting and that the ending was too tidy for some. And Elizabeth Sagewood, who we all know and love, you can check out her review of this, but she said that the book was very bogged down with long sections and too many secondary storylines. So I think for this story, it's probably more about the coming of age aspect and, and maybe the relationship between the two uh, teenagers that are in this story in less about hauntings and stuff like that. So I am a little disappointed because I definitely wanted to just be haunted. So I don't think I'll be picking this one up, but I think if you like coming of age stories, then this is totally a really good option for you. The Haunting of Las Grimas. Uh, by W.M. Cleese. This was a supernatural gothic story. Um, so mainly what I saw for this was really great gothic locations, gothic descriptions, you know, just really putting you in this setting, dropping you into this place. Um, and also that there was a lot of spooky things happening. Lots of lots of activity. And most importantly, that the plot was really good. One reviewer said the setting, beautifully described landscapes and central character were also strengths, but it was hindered by its slow pace, lack of action, and underwhelming supernatural storyline. Which brings us into the cons, which, which was that there wasn't a lot happening. It seems like it was 
let's not say boring, but just that maybe it was too too much of a slow burn. Maybe nothing was moving uh, quite as fast as it maybe it should have. Um, it is unfortunate to say that there's an underwhelming supernatural storyline. That makes me feel like maybe the supernatural aspect is like things that are never determined or explained or have an actual uh, place where they're coming from. Um, you know, kind of like kind of like like when I go walking in the woods and I'm like, oh, it feels creepy. Like, okay, that could be a supernatural thing, but unless it's really defined as such, and unless there is some reason why I'm feeling that creepiness and there, there, it, it connects itself to my actual real life, then it's not really much of anything, you know. One complaint that I did see a few times was that there is quite a few moments of animal cruelty and a lot of people felt that it was a little exploitative so definitely warning there. There is also a mention about the writing style. So apparently the writing style for the maybe like the, the voice of I don't know if it's written in first person or whatever but it seems like um, it's kind of odd like maybe it has an unusual cadence or they just talk in a unusual way of some sort but it appears that it's written that way on purpose it's not it wasn't just an accident or something like i think the author really intended for this person to have a, an unusual way of, of speaking and for some readers that worked and for some readers it didn't so i think this story is kind of up in the air some people said it that you know they really liked it and some people were like it's pretty forgettable. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's going to come down to if you can get down with that voice styling, um, you know, maybe the story will work better for you. So these were the books for January and February, just seeing what everyone was thinking about them, what people were saying about them. Um, I think it's kind of fun to revisit these. Uh, I, so I, it definitely narrowed things down for me, at least. Like there were some things that I was really, really excited about and now I'm kind of like, eh, you know, maybe not. <laughs> Be sure to let me know what you think of these books, if you've read them or not, and if you know how you felt about them, if you agreed with, uh, you know, kind of what I found here, let me know down in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you are doing super well. Please like and comment down below if you found this video useful, and subscribe if you would like to get more videos from me. Other than that, please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.